Today is our Generosity Sunday. What does that mean? I'm going to take you a little bit back to how things started with Hungry Jen. And then if you are first time visiting Hungry Jen, you are welcome. You get a chance to sit in and see a little bit about where we've been, where we are, and where we are going. If you are watching us for the first time, you're also welcome for that. In May 8th, 2003, which was 2003, long time ago, about 19 years ago, um, we purchased this building that we call now Hungry Gen Home. Pastor uh, Don Strong from Faith Assembly helped us to secure the deal for this. Um, our church was just a few families and our pastor had a vision that we will be reaching the community. We did not speak any English, but that didn't stop us from applying to get a building. We didn't have any paperwork. We were not registered as a church. We didn't have any savings as a church. Pastor had a big vision, had a big faith. He was proclaiming it for about a few years. We were graced by a rent from Richland uh, West Side Baptist Church. Uh, we used it for free for a year and then Desert Streams uh, Church gave us Thursday youth services place uh, to use and then our pastor took the step of faith went to get a building across Pasco High School so he went to the Assemblies of God to ask for money and they said we have our own building on Sylvester for the same price and it's in a better shape a few other churches before tried to buy it they uh, couldn't pay for it so it's still there would you like that one instead so our pastor says yes and he got this building we went into this building took us a year to find funds for the down payment three hundred thousand dollars 20 years ago it seemed like 30 million we looked at that number and that just scared us all those zeros and uh, we found the down payment money we moved into this facility we signed uh, the lease or the the payment for the payments we had a government school that helped us to pay for this building for at least 15 or something years and then they moved out praise the Lord we have now space for our kids ministry there because when they were here we couldn't have a larger kids ministry and a few years later after that we actually paid this building off which was just uh, three or four years ago so it took us a very long time to pay off three hundred thousand dollars but the loan was very small and God has blessed us with this wonderful building this was our church um, one person and I won't highlight who was in what trouble they had because we're live streaming but um, but this is pretty much was our church at the time this was our youth group this was our media team this was our kids ministry this was everything pretty much amazingly is most than half are still here uh, some have transitioned uh, to other cities, some have moved and some are going to come back to Jesus in Jesus name. And so, but majority of the people are still here uh, today. Uh, this was me. This is how I prepared for services, dressed blue and the pews were blue as well. And you usually looked very nervous right before getting up to preach as I still do today. This was actually my grandpa. Um, our grandma praise God she's here but our grandpa he went to be with the Lord he always seemed to stare to the right not to the stage I don't know why when I go to heaven I'm gonna ask him and so so this was not position of the photo it just always seemed to stare that way this was actually Dan this was long time ago Dan actually played drums before he walked away from the Lord <laughs> And then came back and Dan was skinny then he grew and he got skinny again so, so Dan was here with us for a very very long time ago and this was Ilya and Ilya is like in the Hebrews it says the Lord is the same yesterday today and forever he I feel like Ilya always looked the same like Ilya would fast 40 days he looks the same I fast literally three days and I'm looking like I just like had some kind of a you know lost all of my weight and so Ilya is always Ilya was our worship leader still our overseer of uh, worship and this was I would consider a revival now a few things about it for those of you who are far it's blurry because that was the best that we could do with media at the time <laughs> that was before Everett Edder probably was uh, taking photos and so this is the half of this side sanctuary was filled on the youth service this was what we called revival 
Amen. So I just want to let you know that this was a really big deal. We thank God for stuff like that and, uh, and things were blurry but revival was there. And I will recognize the ladies. I'm not sure if you recognize the man though. <laughs> this is Bryson. Amen. <laughs> so uh, Bryson who's ministering today in other cities, you know, he actually got saved at a very young tender age of I think 13 years of age. He came straight to our encounter. He got filled with the Holy Spirit, saved and ever since then, you know, Bryson has been part of our team. So I just kind of want to show you the history that a lot of the people that you see today, they've been, they've been around for some time. This is what we would call today a prayer line. Now a prayer line is we had people with uh, papers that were there and camera work, everything and there's this thing I was holding in my hand called anointing water. Now some of you are like, what is that? You don't want to know. It, it was in our past. Uh, the Lord used us powerfully but that's where we learned to do deliverance right here in our sanctuary. And Lana's over there trying to say everything in Russian for online uh, live stream and this was actually not a wedding. This was a sermon illustration. I made one of the guys Miguel and Alessia get married as part of a sermon. Now they didn't actually pronounce vows because that would require us to break vows afterwards. So this was me talking about a Jewish wedding and so we, I have no idea where I got that idea. I look back at it, I was like this probably is not a good idea. But at the time it seemed like a good idea. This was me pointing a sword. Now I had a habit of pointing stuff at people. One time I pointed a gun during a sermon. Yeah, wrong. I never owned a gun so I took a gun from somebody who was empty and Bryson gave me electron guns and so now that I have guns and I know that you don't point guns at people but um, this time I just pointed a sword so it didn't shoot and um, this was our time. This was a this was not a funeral. This was a new year's party. I brought a casket. This was not a first time I brought a casket. This was not a last time I brought a casket. One time I brought a casket put my brother inside. I don't know if this was a brother problem I had or something but it and and then we actually covered with my brother inside. So I just prepared my brother for you know the day that he's gonna be in a casket and uh, he put the earphones in we opened the casket. The idea behind this was pretty much preparation for your expiration. I like the way it rhymed. We might bring that back one of these days and so but actually because I've never seen people die at this time so like to me it was really cool to see a casket because we we're just a bunch of youth now that we actually have seen funerals and we've seen two people dying you know this actually would mean something very different now but at the time I was in youth ministry and that was what we did uh, this is a mannequin but I want you to see a little piglet right behind me this was actually a pig now I had a a sermon illustration maybe I lacked a little bit in the anointing so I had to compensate it with illustrations but I had a sermon that I was preaching about a woman that's beautiful with no discernment or discretion is like a pig with a golden nose ring so I kind of thought what would be it would be a really good idea to bring a pig to the service I brought a goat one time we tied it to the cross and um, so the goat worked very, really well I thought pig would be just fine too so I think Leo and Paul helped to build this little place we washed that poor pig I didn't know how bad they stink even after you wash them. Two minutes of having this pig here, every person was sitting like this. So I had to switch my illustration to say that you know a bad attitude is like a bad smell. You don't see it but you sense it and you know something stinks but you can't point your finger to it. So it worked out really well. We had to finish service really fast though. And then poor pig ran away so we had to run around chase it in the yard because we needed to return back to the farmer. Now in this building where we are sitting here today, we've been here for 19 years going on 20 years. We've seen people saved here. We've seen people delivered here. We've seen people healed here. Uh, Don Strong who built this place before us said how many people got baptized in the Holy Spirit. This is I really believe it holds like a revival well. Internship was started here six years ago. Uh, prayer lines, race to deliver. First race to deliver was actually here. First prayer line deliverance was actually here. So many great men and women of God that came and imparted things in here. It's where I encountered God in here. It's where I felt the call of God in one of the offices where children encountered the Lord. But this place as incredible and amazing as this is has a little problem. It's too small. 
and it's our bottleneck. As you see with the parking lot, we can't expand, we can't buy out the trailer parks next to it. We've tried already. We can't expand with parking lot. We're close to highway and we're close with Sylvester. About five years ago, our church eldership or the board started to look at the possibility, what will the next season of Hungry Gen look like? Unfortunately, not a lot of churches are for sale and a lot of other places that were, were for sale, they were not very good. And so for many years, we were looking at it, looking at it. And then what took place is that in, on June 25th, 2021, so that's about a year and a half ago, we purchased a building in Kennewick for $3.127 million. And this is that place. It's off of Edison and Canal Drive. And so this is the place where it's going to be the future home of Hungry Generation. It used to be, uh, I think, a skating arena and then it became a welfare place. The beautiful part about this place is it does not have supporting beams in the sanctuary, in the building. It's pretty much just a clear open box which allows us to do whatever we want to do there for the glory of God. So it's really close to Kamaikan. It's really close on Edison Street. There's a potential uh, bridge being built from Edison to Pasco potentially um, it's in works and so this is the building that we have purchased the problem the good thing with this building is that we can have more people there but the parking lot as you can see is very small so we were presented with a problem and that is we can't expand fully there unless we have parking lot the next to the building a land was for sale we purchased the land a year or that year for a million two hundred forty uh, hundred thousand dollars. So this is pretty much how it looks is this is the building that we have purchased and then next to this building we purchased the land. The land came also with a parcel for a triplex and we felt that it would be very good to have an exit on both sides on Edison because Edison is very busy and Canal is busy and so that we can have exit and entrance on both sides so that we can have a large parking lot and so that we can have a housing in the future for internship. The two fourplexes right here the owner was already willing to sell them to us but he went back on it which is good because we don't have the money and so but they will be available probably in the future and we'll be able to by God's grace this is kind of a dream don't tell this to the Alvarez guy yet yet but we're gonna buy out these fourplexes we're gonna buy all of this out and have a new sanctuary that will seat about 2,000 to or to 4,000 people right here the city will pay for the bridge to Pasco and then Hungry Gen will be in the center of what is happening in our region. So that's the future. And also we'll buy also this thing behind, but just please don't tell them that yet and stuff. This is, I'm just letting you know. Um, but for now, this is where we're at and this is giving, gives us enough space and enough time to, um, to do this thing for our church. Now, here is how it's going to look. As you see, a parking lot, a house that will be here in the future, the church and the playground for kids. This is the aerial view of the facility. The sanctuary will have an, a rise of like bleachers type looking so that it will give a really good view for people who are sitting on the back instead of only looking at the screens. The colors will be different. This is just an example of what this will look like. The sanctuary will seat about 900 people, which is a very large increase from 200. We, we can technically only sit 198 or 99 people here. So this will give us a really um, large opportunity for that. We will be able to have 400 children in one service in the kids zone because we'll be able to have 18 classes for children and about 16 offices at the same time. Our challenge with this building plan was not only to create a plan where we can seat as many people as possible but where we can have a spacious lobby where we can have also a hangout place with coffee shop and also where we can have enough space for children on Sunday morning as our church is growing more people are having children which is children are blessing from the Lord and so we want to have a lot, a lot of uh, space for children but we also want to prepare everything in such a way that we can build a private school there as well. 
So we were in consult, consultation with churches that have schools and in consultation with people who, know, who do this for a living. And they advised us, it took us a long time to finally make a plan where everything is already going to be pre-plumbed and made where a private school can happen with the switch. Everything is there already. The playground, the classes, everything is set up for a private school. If the Lord gives us the finances, we'll be able to launch the private school as soon as we move in. Until then, we're just going to have everything ready. So that's why it took us so much time to develop all these plans because we didn't want to develop a plan for church. And then two years down the road, as we see the woke agenda is really advancing in schools. And then we're like, oh, we want to do a school. And then we have to redo the whole thing again and trying to redo a construction. So we wanted to do it one time and do it right instead of redoing it later on. So this is the first floor as you are seeing. Um, this is going to be the sanctuary. The entrance, there will be two entrances. One is for the main entrance for the church and then the second entrance is going to be for the children. This will be the check-in area. It's, it's going to be pretty spacious and then the toddler's room, the nursery rooms and then parents will be able to drop off their children and actually go into the common area or into the coffee shop straight through the building or they can go from the outside. We will have two uh, floors in there which is one of the reasons we're raising the roof and I'm going to mention to you in a second is that because this space is not really big we wanted to optimize it for our classes and in order to do that we had to find a way to fit a lot of classes in a small space without sacrificing the sanctuary spacing. So the main floor, as you see, will have six classrooms, two offices, two multi-purpose rooms. What I'm excited about is not only the really nice spacious lobby, but we will have a large multi-purpose room that almost could be, uh, could fit about the same amount as we have right here in the sanctuary. So we'll be able to have two of these rooms, one in here and one on the second floor for internship, where we have almost like two, two small sanctuaries that we will have straight within that building, in, not including the rest of the 18 classes. So we will have a lot of space to do a lot of good stuff. Come on somebody. How many of you are excited? Now, this is not how this is going to look. We will not have these fans, I can guarantee you that. And these colors. This is just to kind of give you um, a baseline of how this will look. It will be extremely spacious, 19 feet. So about from here to uh, to the ceiling over there, uh, it's going to be very spacious. There will be three entrances inside. There will be a coffee shop and then we will have a hangout area in there. If you go upstairs, you can go into the internship or a multi-purpose room that is going to be there. This is going to be media overseeing into the sanctuary so they can see what's happening out there. The sanctuary as you have seen will have um, we will be able to enter in there will be the the room for the mothers with children right there and then we will have a really nice uh, kitchen for that as well and a seating like a balcony uh, seating on both sides this is the view from the stage this is going to be the view from the back into the stage now we will have rooms on both sides, we'll call them green rooms where people who are ministering or who are preparing to preach will be on both sides, either worship team on one side and ministers on the other side. We will have a second story also for some storage. We are developing some underground tunnels under the stage, secret passages and so we will do some secret stuff like hiding wires and I'm just kidding. And then we will have a water baptism right here where we pretty much instead of going in there it will just open up, you'll go get baptized we close it down and and the service will continue and the incredible part is the dream that I've always had and failed at it for the last 19 years will finally be able to bring a car from the back straight into the stage a Porsche or a Tesla I don't know and so we will have enough space in here where we can actually bring whatever production that we need to do on the stage um, whatever that we choose to do as a ministry right now like we're so limited with these tiny doors but we'll be able to do very large productions if we need to we can bring camels if we want to on Christmas so we can finally do what what we can without um, the limitations amen <laughs> really excited for that I can only imagine the creative ideas the Lord will give me <laughs> upper floor the second floor will have classes as I mentioned and also it will have offices um, on the second floor. Now one of the challenges that we have with this building and that is this is that we cannot 
we cannot raise the roof uh, from the ground till about the ceilings 19 and a half to about 20 feet the foundation of the building is not strong enough to raise the roof and beams of the building are so low because these beams are so heavy they carry so much weight therefore the building doesn't have support system so the beams are five feet into the ceiling that you can look at and we can't raise the roof which means that we're limited with the amount of classrooms we can have or the amount of people that we can fit in the sanctuary and so we honestly toiled and work with the city with the engineers what can we do and so we found a nice loophole around it is actually to take these five feet beams that hold the building and instead of raising the roof to lift these beams up so it frees up extra five feet it doesn't seem a lot but it actually becomes a lot when it sits freed up what that allowed for us to create a second floor for the kids zone and what it allowed for us is to create just a wider spacing in the sanctuary so now the challenge is of course to create that we got the permits and in fact as we speak in this week or next week the first beam is going to be going up and so there will be these brackets which um, our team really worked very hard Paul and the team to save a lot of money on these brackets so these brackets will hold these beams so if you're seeing that these this large beam is going to be elevated small beams connected to it are held back right now until this beam goes up and then the small beams will be connected through the new brackets to this large beam freeing up more space and creating room for second floor for kids zone without us putting more weight on the foundation on the outside this is that beam it's covered right now with the with the facial what's going to be happening is that these beams will stick out five feet the brackets will hold them and then we will create a cover all around so our building will look taller even more taller on the outside as well as you're seeing it's happening right now so this is how the building looks from within we got all of these things supporting the small beams because as we lift the tall beams so that the building doesn't collapse and then we are going to attach the small beams to the large beam as well and thus we're going to free up extra five feet the reason that we are getting into a new facility it's obvious but I still want to kind of remind us is that because of the larger sanctuary extended parking lot the future private school more office space internship chapel and housing for interns as this building has become a place where we have grown we have seen God do great things for us building is a means to an end the end is the purpose and the call of God uh, there's so much activity that happens at hungry gen Monday through Friday and if you ever want to do just simply come in at any time and just look at what's happening here there's parking lot is full there's always somebody running around doing something this person praying this person sometimes you walk by the office somebody's screaming out somebody's saying who are you somebody is interviewing another student somebody's counseling somebody's praying somebody's just eating donuts um, somebody recording videos there's always an activity that is taking place we're impacting hundreds of students through this facility it literally is like a training ground it's like a home for a spiritual family it's a training ground for discipleship training ground for youth and a training ground for the next generation the board of trustees and you can go on our website and see who are the board of the trustees they're older men are overseers of the finances and the process of construction I do want to let you know that our church's finances are um, are uh, under oversight of the board of trustees and the eldership the construction project is not being done by the prophecy it's being done by the wisdom the counsel of people who know what they're doing in this area okay so, and I am not involved in it in the sense I'm just aware of it but there are people who know this very well and they are deeply involved which frees me to do just more of the ministry and make sure that we have the finances that's my number one job and so but that we have other people who are running this and doing this really well and I'm really grateful for that because building projects usually drain pastors like crazy um, because there's so much work that is involved in there the person that runs the project for construction is the person with the baby face which makes me honestly be very concerned about the future of our church now but actually that's the oh, okay so I'm, 
I feel better now. <laughs> so, but Paul, Paul is the general, general contractor. For him, for Paul, this is not a job. It's like building a home for himself. And this is why I love the person not only that runs it, but even the whole team. For us, this is not about building for the church. We treat it as we would build our own house. So we try to, honestly, Paul is doing his best to try to find best deals, but we also don't want cheap stuff that then the ceiling collapses on us. All right, so we want good stuff, but we want for a good price. So sometimes they would call and they would ask different um, companies, hey, what about, you know, could you give us a discount for Hungry Gen or this and that? They found really amazing already deals with brackets and so much stuff, leveraging their connections in the community for the sake of building God's house. And I'm super excited for that. Amen. Now let's get to the uh, spiritual component of it. A few weeks ago, as I was reading from Luke chapter 7 verse 5, it talks about a Roman centurion who, who had a sick servant and the elders came to Jesus and they said this about somebody. They said, he loves our nation and he has built us a synagogue. He is deserving of this miracle, they said to Jesus. And Jesus says, sounds good, okay, I'm gonna go. This, this high, uh, high, roller, high roller donor who is a Roman who helped to build Israel a synagogue and he loves Jewish people. And on the way to this man's house, this man sent a messenger and said, Jesus, please don't come to my house. I'm not even worthy for you to be under my roof, send the word. And Jesus said this about this Roman centurion. He said that this man has greater faith than anybody else. And this is what I want to highlight for those people who come to Hungry Gen, but Hungry Gen is not your home church. You love Hungry Gen. I'm going to ask you to do what Roman centurion did. Help us to build a new sanctuary. I'm just going to shoot straight. And three is that exercise great faith in God. That you have walk in great faith in God. That's who Roman centurion was. If you're watching us online, re-watching or re-listening, and maybe you're visiting us here today and you have not been hungry gen is not your home church but honestly you love what God is doing here you love what God is doing with the youth you love what God is doing with the church and you're like I would love to be a part of helping to build we, we don't do synagogue because synagogues didn't treat Jesus really well but we're building also we don't do temples because we are the temples we just have a church building help us to build that for the glory of God amen the second person that I would highlight who is not second in order I would say he's first in order who helped to build God's house I would say is David and I want to highlight this verse from him when David was about to build God's house God says you can't build because you killed too many people and so what David went he developed plans he started to save a lot of money and right before he passed away he passes a plan and finances to his son Solomon to build a temple and this is what he said in the prayer after the generous giving that he did. Moreover because I have set my affection on the house of my God I have given to the house of my God over watch this and above all that I have prepared for the holy house my own special treasure of gold and silver. A few things I want you to notice. David was extremely rich toward the end of his life because he conquered a lot of nations. What they did in those days is you conquer a lot of nations, you make everybody your slave and you take everybody's money. That's kind of how they got rich those days. They didn't create things like Apple and Microsoft and other stuff. They just went and I take what you have and now I'm more richer. David got a lot of money like that. He had a lot of stuff. He wanted to give God a big temple because every religion worshiped their gods by building them houses. And God came and says, don't build me a house. First of all, you're not the right guy. Your hands are bloody. You know what David did? Didn't, didn't, David didn't say, oh, praise God. I can keep my money now. You know, what David does is he begins to create a plan and then he takes his money. Look what this he said. Above all that I have prepared, special treasure. He begins to give to God. Toward end of his life, David gives tons, you can read that in the Bible, of gold, silver. It's almost like David is going to heaven empty. He doesn't give it to his son. He's building God a house. I was reading this yesterday and I'm thinking, 
David, why did you put so much into God's house instead of pass it on to yours? And I felt the Lord prompted in my heart that when David gave all of that to build God's house, God built his house. May I remind you that David didn't sit on Jesus' throne, but Jesus will sit on David's throne. May I remind you when blind Bartimaeus screamed out, who did he say Jesus was a son of? Son of David. It's almost like David goes into eternity empty-handed says Lord all the special treasure I know you don't let me build a temple but I can finance the temple my son doesn't have money I can give him the money and the plan and Lord I'm just, I just love David didn't say oh and please God don't forget about my name he wasn't trying to build himself a name but then God begins to build him a dynasty and begins to build his family and I think this is a lesson for us instead of building yourself a name build God's house you might be surprised with how God can take care of your house your name your brand your business everything belongs to God so the first point that I want you to leave with today is everything is God's that's why David said things like you know Lord everything is yours the second thing I want to leave us with is that God enables us to give giving is not something that we have to we get to it's not actually very difficult to give think about it like this it's about perspective if I ask you right now to reach into your neighbor's purse and pull out a wallet and give as you always wanted to give how many of you don't do that don't wait wait hold on because I see somebody's already going into somebody else's so don't do that but just imagine for just a second how many of you just let's just let's just play the game how many of you would not have a problem giving everything from your neighbor's wallet absolutely not under because of one thing it's not mine I wonder how many times it's mine stands in the way of us being generous as we would love to be generous but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this for all things come from you and of your own we have given you David is not saying Lord I am so generous he feels humbled to be generous it humbles him that he is able to give that to the Lord what an attitude he doesn't feel arrogant about it. He doesn't feel like he's some kind of an accomplished, powerful giver. He feels that it's a, Lord, you actually allowing me to contribute to your kingdom. This is incredible. I'm not worthy of that. Our people are not worthy. And David being the king who technically owned all of his citizens, because in the kingdom, king owns his citizens and all their wealth. He says, all of this is yours and out of yours we have given to you this is not me giving to God it's God entrusting me and actually I'm giving back to what has always been and always will be his now this is way easier to sing about we're singing today Lord I give you everything and we're singing you know and a lot of us like everything but when it actually comes to giving anything like this is where a lot of people like no amens people like mm -mm get a little bit grunchy, a little, little bit just nervous. Where is he gonna go with this? I brought a friend today, Vlad, be careful. I got you. Three, giving gives us a new perspective on life. Look what David says. David says, for we are aliens. I feel like you don't realize, you know, people believe in aliens. You become an alien when um, you start giving. <laughs> now, like, not like that alien but you become this person where your life is a pilgrimage he says we are aliens and pilgrims before you remember old testament didn't emphasize afterlife as much as the new testament does old testament has very few references of hades hell eternal life a lot of references is if you obey god you'll be blessed here not there but david's perspective is we are aliens and we're pilgrims before you as we so is all of our fathers our days on earth are as a shadow and look at this depressing statement and without hope 
I feel like after you give that much, you really become low hope. You're like, man, I am so discouraged. This is how life is on earth. When you are generous, it's your hotel. It's not your home. When you're not generous, you treat your life on earth, you grasp it, but it's not your home. And then when you die, this is what they say, he left home. But when your life on earth is a hotel, when you die, they say he went home. Why some of us don't think about being with God in eternity? For a lot of us, I'll be honest with you, because all of our treasure is in our savings account. I remember the first time that I generously, extravagantly and sacrificially gave for some weird reason. I wasn't even thinking about it. It's like heaven marked me. All I was thinking was about heaven. I said, Lord, am I being suicidal? Am I gonna die soon? <laughs> Are you preparing me? I'm like only 27 years of age. And I felt this answer from the scripture. The only reason why you're so conscious of heaven is because for the first time in your life, you have more there than here. Because think about it, if you put all of your money in your car, God forbid somebody parks next to it. You'll be checking the church cameras and you'll be like, I hope nobody parks next to it and hit my car on accident. Why? Because a lot of stuff is invested there. Your heart is there. Look at David. The moment he gives extravagantly for God's temple, look at his heart. He says, Lord, this is a hotel. I enjoy it. I unpacked, but not too much because right when I'm about to settle down the check out time is coming so I want to remind you church one of the reasons we live with eternity in mind is that all of us are going to die and we all are going to face that and I have never seen hers with a u-haul maybe you believe in the Egyptian mythology and if you do I can tell you one thing all of those Egyptian pharaohs when I went to Egypt this year with my wife and my brother and my, uh, my sister-in-law I was surprised by a few things by Egyptian pharaohs one is how little they focused on building their palaces and how much they focused on building their pyramids pyramid is their funeral home palace was where you live and I was surprised there was not one palace one palace for the Pharaoh, not one palace. There are temples for their gods and secondly, pyramids. They put all of their money in the U-Haul and they try to put it into their pyramids. Now this is the interesting part. Everything they put in the pyramids got stolen. They never, they never made it with them. So I just want to remind you that if you're going to do this whole Pharaoh thing with your life, it just won't work. Somebody will steal it and most likely it will be the government or your relatives <laughs> or that so I want to encourage you today is don't you haul to hers try to live a wise life be a person that passes on ahead of you because you can't take it with you anyway live your life as an alien as a pilgrim live your life that this life on earth is a hotel it's not my home my home is with God my home is I am eternal being that will live etern with eternity for God and when I die I want God to take me to his place and I want to be able to have a wonderful place in there instead of just in here come on somebody number four God tests our hearts through giving Look at what David also said in that prayer. I know also my God that you test the heart and the pleasure and have pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly, nobody forced me, nobody manipulated me, nobody compelled, drove me to do it. I willingly offered all these things. But I want you to see the word test in here is that God you test the heart. I believe that giving is the ultimate test of where our trust, our loyalties lie. Is it a law to give? Absolutely not. That's why David says willingly. It's not by compulsion. It's not by pressure. It's not, oh, guys, if we don't raise the money, we can't get into a new building. We don't do that at Hungry Jack. Well, that's not how we roll. This is God's project. God's going to take care of that. But at the same time, what I do want to encourage each one of us is that we do remember we are being tested at the same time. God is watching our heart. Do we trust Him 
also are we willing to go to the next level as well because a lot of times when you pass the test God takes you to the next level and so are we obedient to his voice are we supporting his cause and his purposes now as a kingdom builder here are a few things I want you to keep in mind that we all can do in some shape or form number one is believe somebody say believe, believe. come on you say a little bit louder because that is the easiest part come on say a little bit louder the rest of them are hard believe. somebody dropped it in the chat believe what I want us to believe very big thing to believe for 10 million dollars the first 1.2 million we already have paid for down payment the next 3.5 million is needed for phase one for us to move into that building and have our first service there after that we need to do phase two which will finish the rest of the stuff like furnish the kitchen and furnish the rest of the things within the building then is the housing and then is to pay off the loan so this is what we need to believe I'm gonna build your faith for a second before we couldn't get the building every place we looked at it didn't work Mike Todd who is a pastor in Tulsa had a breakthrough with their building I think the first building they got was like for 10 million or something they raised the money within six months or something like a very short period then he got a year later a second complex with the whole um, businesses there they also raised the money I think 20 million very quickly within six or five months and I never even heard them raised in those money during a three-day fast in December I felt the Lord put on my heart to reach out to Mike Todd and for us to give a sacrifice from Hungry Gen because we could not get a building. Anywhere we tried to uh, look for, it wasn't available. So I asked for the permission of our eldership to give a seed from our church and to fly there to give that seed so he can pray for us. Another miracle that happened, I reached out to Mike Todd and he responded within five minutes, which is a, with million followers, that's a miracle. He said, come, this was Tuesday. He says, come this week, I'm available and let's pray about it. We fly there on Thursday. We have a meeting with him. He prays for me and Ilya. Few months later, we find a place in Kenwick. Now, that's not why we went there. We went there not only for the building. We went for a miracle of making sure that it's paid. <laughs> so I want you to have faith with us. The seeds were sown and the prophetic words were released. Just this year, a friend of mine, Jeremiah Johnson, who's an amazing prophet he didn't miss the stuff about Trump though but he apologized for that and uh amazing man of God loves Jesus he was flying through Tri-Cities wanted to meet with me I wanted to meet with him as well I took him through our church took him through the Kenwick building this year he was gifted a 13 million dollar building free for his ministry where he's starting a church I asked him specifically to pray for our church that as we're stepping in that God will release the same miracle for Hungry Gen. So I believe that God's going to give us a miracle. Can somebody say amen? Another friend of mine is David Diga. David Diga was raising funds for 20 million dollars for a studio. They raised about two and a half and then through one check of 18 million dollars the studio was the first phase was completed and so and I'm gonna be actually by God's grace going and seeing the opening and potentially maybe meeting the person who wrote that check so we believe <laughs> come on somebody amen let's give the Lord a clap offering number two is we can serve we can serve you can scan the QR code not only we believe but maybe you are able to so we don't hire general work for sweeping and taking out the garbage or maybe some electrical work and you know doing some uh, some stuff some like very basic construction work that you maybe have skills from and you're like I can't do anything but I can offer some labor work you can scan the QR code and join the team to serve in that capacity or talk to Paul number three is we can give it's obvious at the end of the year a lot of businesses sometimes look for either tax write-offs or they're looking for how can we also give where can we give this can be a great opportunity maybe you've been tithing to hungry gen i want to let you know that as hungry gen we've been actually using all of our savings for the current building construction the building fund has been depleted a year ago partially is because we never emphasized people to give above their tithe into the building fund and so we've just been using the savings which is fine for now where we are headed it just will not be sufficient so I am as a pastor coming to you and asking you that if the Lord puts on your heart above your tithe to give one time or reoccurring gift that you choose the building fund and you can also 
give especially as part of your end year giving you can pray now I'm not just saying pray that God will only send the donors but you can pray that God will make you a kingdom builder I carry a check Ilya Victoria and quite a few people in our church are for a million dollars now this may seem like why would you want to do that Hannah could not have children I don't have a million dollars so me and Hannah have the same problem and Hannah prayed a very simple prayer she says God you give it I give it back to you I win you win <laughs> now at first it was this way seemed like oh that's a bargaining thing that's like but her faith was right and guess what happened God gave her not only one son he gave her many children after that so I have faith God can bring people who will give a million dollar check but the same God could give me a million dollars so I tell God and I have a team with us the Lord if you give me a million you know where it's gonna go it will help with the building fund and so I carry that check I pray for that I have opportunities where that could potentially happen maybe with one of the books and with other stuff and I want you to pray for that as well say Lord would you enlarge my territory would you make me a kingdom builder it doesn't cost anything to pray it doesn't cost anything to believe you'd be surprised what God is capable of doing through you if you simply believe and you simply ask now but when you promise that and God does it make sure you keep your word <laughs> because that's the prayer God's gonna pay attention to fast um, next month we are doing our annual 21 day January 9th through 29th fasting the word the scripture that we have for this fast is this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting now in reference it's dealing with demons and unbelief but we believe there are certain mountains can only be moved when we pray and fast so as a church we're also going to be praying and fasting that God supernaturally breaks certain limitations that hold us back from seeing that breakthrough for our church and I would encourage you to join us with that plan on January 29th which will be at the end of next month we will have what we called we did it one time about three years ago a sacrifice Sunday where we will ask you to prayerfully consider giving something that is above your means yes you may say why would anybody want to do that well most of you live above your means all your life one time in your life you can give above your means and you won't die and so but that's what we call sacrificial giving where it stretches us we will after the fast be prayerfully considering and doing and something you can plan for maybe save for or just be thinking about if that is on your heart as a church we're going to be intentional about raising funds for the building fund we are going to cut back on spending a lot of stuff has already been cut we are reviewing whatever programs need to be shut down to be shut down without killing the flow of the anointing and the purposes of God in our church we're also going to put this building for sale and look for a buyer for this building who can give us the money without us leaving this building until we need to move in into that building why are we going to be a little bit more aggressive because what what will stop us from moving into that building is finances right now and so we want to be able to move there soon hopefully by the end of next year or Easter or uh, Resurrection Sunday of not this this coming year but the year after that 2024 but what's going to slow us down is the finances so we're going to do everything that we can I offered my books in the lobby for since they've been selling that all the royalties go to building fund already for a few years my wife this week stepped down from the paid staff I'm taking a pay cut starting next month also we're trimming few positions from the staff in Hungry Gen the things that we could do as volunteers we want to build a culture of volunteers we want to build a culture where people come on Sunday not to work but to serve we want to build a culture where people look forward to giving of their time their finances their prayer to build God's house instead of building their careers by using God's house so we want to build that culture and I want to be the person that will model that and begin to walk in that. I'm not the, the example but I want to be a part of that as well. In the conclusion, nine years ago I would say changed my and my wife's life. Nine years ago I didn't have five books that were written, sixth one that's already in production and seventh one that will start be written next week. I didn't have social media platform did not have the invitations that I had um, we were living in a duplex that during winter you can put your hand and pretty much you can freeze it because it had no insulation and it was so cold 
Um, we barely could save $200 a month. It was very difficult and we were saving every single thing to finally save $10,000 that one day we could buy a dream home. On the way to California in November of 2013, I felt prompted in my heart to take the money that we were saving and instead of building a new home to give that away to the ministry because our church was struggling. We were not seeing the salvations that we wanted to see. We didn't see the growth in the youth ministry. I was the youth pastor at the time. My wife agreed together with us. We flew. It was in December nine years ago to Ukraine. We gave that seed. We died million deaths honestly doing that and we received prayer. The next month we came back. Nothing really changed but we decided to start giving every single month radically. Above our tithe a thousand dollars and mind you we couldn't save 300. Where did that money came? It started to come out of nowhere but the money that started to come in wasn't even for our bills. It was for our promise to give to God. God started to do miracles in our finances. Shortly after that my father found land next to church which he borrowed me money to build a house because I had nothing and then we moved in there. There was enough money in the construction loan to pay off my house, my father. Right after that we started to see the goodness of God in our finances. Our church started to grow. The youth group started to grow. Most of you came after that season. The Lord put on my heart to write a book. I'm now five books in. The school started. So many, so many other things started. We sold that house two years ago. Made good money. Used that money to flip and make some more money. And honestly, we are right now at that place where we were hoping, looking already for land to buy our home that one day we'll one day build and retire. And about five, four months ago, I started to feel this sick feeling. As some of you know what that is. Looking at our building, looking at the amount of money we don't have, and looking at the fact that God has blessed me, has prospered in the last uh, nine years, and um, me and my wife, and I started to get this thing that we have to go and the same thing that happened nine years ago has to happen that will set a platform for the next nine to ten years both in my personal finances and in our church. I was reminded that when our pastor started the church 20 years ago he was not on a salary. He's still not on a salary. For 10 years he worked full-time construction, raised a big family and took extra money to buy a sound system, buy chairs for the church, anything the church needed to do, he did it on his own. Today I stand on the shoulders of a generation 20 years ago who paid a price for me to be here. And I started to sense in my spirit that I have to now, we have to now have a skin in the game and lay a sacrifice for the next season of our church. And so me and my wife, we agreed that this will be not only the largest donation that came to Hungry Gen, it will be pretty much all that we have, which we will be giving $100,000 this year. Take all the pro proceeds that we made from selling, flipping houses and other stuff that we were hoping to do other things and to give it into the building fund. The reason why I'm sharing this is not to brag, but to encourage you that to me, this is my home. It's my children's home. It's going to be my grandchildren's home. Hungry Jen is not a career for me. It's a calling and everything about Christianity is sacrificial. The times are hard. I know it's very difficult and I want to challenge you that we do it together. When David gave all of his savings, his leaders came on board and said, let's do it together. There was joy, not oh, we're dying. He's milking all of our money, but it was a sense of joy that we are going to do this for God. I remember I presented this to my wife that, hey, I want to take everything that we have and just give it to the building fund. And it was the same feeling as it was nine years ago for 10,000. You know, and my wife at first, she was hesitant, which I was happy. Because I was like, I have this rule. If my wife is not on board, we're not giving. I was like, praise God. Keep them, we're going to keep the money. And then came time, I forgot about it already because this has been already four months or three months cooking. And during a breakfast time, I was sitting with my wife and my wife says, you know, I've been thinking and she said, I think we need to do that. She said, God has blessed us and we need to be a blessing. Plus this is, this is our home. This is not just a church that we preach at and this is, this is our home and we need to be an example. And I love what she said. She says, not because God told me, 
but because I want to. And to me that, that was huge. For those of you that this is your home, that this is the home for your children, I want to encourage you to prayerfully consider a giving either at the end of this year or next year um, or maybe becoming a partner for the building fund. It is God's kingdom. God will take care of this. I know that. I believe God will send millionaires. I wouldn't mind if he makes me one too. If he gives it and it goes, I, I don't want to be a dead sea where stuff flows in, nothing flows out. I want to be a sea of Galilee where Jordan flows in and Jordan flows out. And I say, God, if I keep the outflow open, could you also increase the inflow? I want to have fish, I want to have life and I want to be a blessing. I'm going to die. All of this is not going to matter. But while we live, let's live in such a way where we don't just pray and fast, but we also give. We don't just give, but we cast out demons. We don't just cast out demons, but we love on people. We currently have few people that are asking us to pray because if they get a breakthrough, they're saying that we're going to be contributing to that. And you may say, well, praise God, I'm going to pray for them. But what about, you can pray for yourself too. I don't want everyone to come, give to Hungry Jen, build Hungry Jen, and you left, I left, struggling on the same level that we've been last 20 years. I don't want that. Last nine years, my life changed completely. It's not the same. The same person that was nine years ago is not the same person that is here today. I want 10 years down the road when I stand in the new sanctuary to look back at this time and for most of you that will be there and say, I remember that Sunday. I remember that largest gift that Hungry Gen was ever received and out of all places you know it came from the pastor and I remember that and Vlad is no longer the ministry the Hungry Gen the level the Hungry Gen is in the level that he is in it's just completely different I don't want to stay on the same level and I want to pass this test and for us this is our decision I want to invite you to consider what would that look like for you a few practical tips one of them don't think that by giving you will avoid paying taxes I know that Ivan and a few other people and I even signaled that hey instead of paying taxes give to the church. Um, we are not consultants of accounting. Make sure you consult your accountant. If you know you have to pay $60,000 don't write a check and expect us then to cover your tax bill next year. So just consult your accountant when it comes to end year giving. Secondly, do not give on a credit card or pull the equity out of your house. Why? We give out of the overflow we don't give out of what we don't have. Thirdly, we're not giving because we have to. If in your heart you feel no peace, you feel that this was just an emotional moment that Vlad capitalized on, hold back. Because David says we gave willingly. We don't give under compulsion. We don't even give because we have a need. We give because, because we have it in our heart. Treat it like your house. Let's say you're building a house and you know, and you have savings. Let's say you need to really change the roof in your house. You're building your house. Would you pull out of your savings? Probably. Why? Because the house is priority. And so see it as your house. If you don't see this as your house, I can't ask you to do what I do. Because if you don't see this as your house, it's different. Lastly, if you are in the place where you are married, okay, don't give until your spouse is on board. Unless you have fights all the time already so an extra fight won't do any difference <laughs> like if you're fighting all the time about everything then yeah this is part of how you live and so just give and they just fight and stuff but if you have a good marriage where you see eye to eye your wife your, your husband is listening to the Lord please do not beat your spouse into ah, you don't love God's house don't do that that is not the way don't lose your marriage trying to build God's house that's not the way the Lord wants us to do. Pray for your spouse and you both of you pray and you ask for the permission and you get to the point where both of you are in agreement. Because if you do that and you lose your marriage, it does not give honor to God. And plus we are a local church, we're a family. We're not trying to destroy families, we're trying to build them. And let's start that from this point. Amen? Amen. Amen. So amazing part is there will be no offering after this. I know this would be a good moment probably to do an offering, huh? <laughs> we're like, what a perfect time. No. Uh, this will be a time where my goal is to plant a seed and for the Holy Spirit to water it and for the Lord to reap the harvest when it's that time.
What I'm going to ask you though is I'm going to ask you to pray for yourself to be a kingdom builder. That God will make you a kingdom builder. I want you to place your hand upon your heart right now because it's a hard issue. It's very little to do with finances and God never looks at the amount we give. God always looks at the amount that's left in our account. That's the true sacrifice. Sacrifice is not the amount you give. It's the sacrifice that what is left. Ten years ago ten thousand dollars was not only a sacrifice it was like my whole life and uh, today that's not necessarily a very painful sacrifice but the sacrifice is what I'm going to give is resembled by what's left after that and so um, and I want to live my life where God's kingdom is built where this church prosperous and we get a chance to go to the new season. Lord I pray for all of us myself included the work you've been doing in my own heart Lord the finances that you've been providing through these business deals and other things Lord I thank you that you are enable us to give I thank you Lord that you are speaking to all of us God to be prayerful to be people who fast and during this holiday season the people who are generous Lord I pray that you will bless this project Lord we want to see more people reached God we want to see more students being equipped we want to see children being trained Lord and we also don't want to spend all of our finances only on ourselves. We want businesses to grow. We want to prosper financially so that we can take care of our families and so that we can also take care of your kingdom. I pray for every young man and every young woman. I pray for college students. I pray for single moms right now. I pray for the businessman Lord that maybe is struggling with business Lord and and even maybe there's a desire I would love to be generous but I can't. I pray that you will begin to meet us at the point of our need. I pray that each one of us that we as we plan to give Lord that we will do it out of willingness of our heart. We will do it out of purity and uprightness of our heart. Not out of compulsion, not out of a fighting or some kind of a where there is no peace God but that you give us peace. And Lord as you did it in my life I trust that you will do it again in the next 10 years. I pray that you will do that in our church's life Lord. I pray that we will not just prosper spiritually but we will also prosper financially. That we will prosper in our families. That we will prosper in our health God. And that ultimately we will live our life for Jesus. Not for ourselves God. In Jesus name we pray. Hey thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance and so many other things, go to HungryGen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.